Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning, afternoon, evening, night maybe to everyone who is watching this video. So today my group will continue our discussion about the novel Things Fall Apart. Only this time we will be discussing about in-depth character analysis. Um, but Harris, there are so many characters in the story. I don't know who's who and which which. Fret not because I will be briefly explaining every character in the story. And then we will then continue about the in-depth character analysis. Starting now. Okay, so first we have the families of Okonkwo. So first we have Unoka, which I forgot to put, which is the father. Next we have Okonkwo, the main character, and he married to three wives named the unnamed Ekwefi and Ojiugo, uh, which resulted into children named Nwoye, Obiageli, Ezinma, and Nkechi. Then Okonkwo adopted a son named Ikemefuna. The next we have Umu of your citizens which are Ogbuefi Ugona, the highest settled man, Ogbuefi Ezendu, the oldest and wisest, Nwayeke, respected old woman, Next is Okagbue, the medicine man, Chielo, the priestess of Agbala, Nuakibie, the yam farmer who is married to Anasi, Obiako, the palm wine tapper, the Osu, the people who do dirty and hard work, and then Enoch, the fanatical convert. Then we have Obiarika, who is Okonkwo's friend, who have two children named Maduku and Akweke. Next one we have Okegbu, who is the member of a Gugu society, who has a son named Ibe, who will be marrying Akweke. That's for Umofia citizens. And next is Mbanta citizens, who are Umunna, the oldest man, Uchendu, Okonkwo's uncle, who have two children named Amiku and Njide. Next we have Okuli, who is and Osu and Convert and Neka who is the pregnant woman. The next one is the Africans from other villages. So we have Ozoe Mena, the female survivor of Abame village, Mr. Kiaga, the early convert from Umuro, Akuna who is the person who talks to Mr. Brown about religion really good, uh, and finally Kotma and Ashi Buttocks, who are the court messengers from Umuro. And finally we have the British who are Mr. Brown, liberal Christian missionary, who is the nice person. And then we have Mr. Smith, who is Mr. Brown's replacement, who is kinda not good to the Africans. And finally, we have District Commissioner, who are the officers who was given authority over the lower Niger region. So those are the characters in the story. So obviously, we will not go through all characters in the story because that will be hell. So we decided to choose only six characters that we think is suitable for us to know their in-depth analysis. So the first one is uh, Okonkwo, who is the tragic hero. So you see his like the head and looks like a warrior. And Unoka, which is the field father. So we see that he's wearing hat, kind of like a clown, the field father. The next one is Nuoye, who is the sulky betrayer. And then Ezinma, who is the favorite daughter. The next one is Ikemefuna. Uh, there's the uh, skull icon, which because he is... Uh, the second tribute. And last but not least, Mr. Brown, who is the white guy. So without further ado, let's move on to the first uh, discussion, which is Okonkwo and Unoka. <laughs> Today, I will be presenting about Unoka and Okonkwo, two very important characters in the story, things fall apart. Now, let's go a little bit into uh, Unoka's backstory. Actually, we'll talk a little bit more about him before going into that. Now, through the story, we know that Unoka is basically a lazy person who only likes to play music and drink wine. He also got a lot of debt and rarely ever paid it. He is the reason Okonkwo is the character he is. Now let's go into a little bit more about his backstory. Now as we know Unoka is Okonkwo's dad. He died 10 years before the start of the novel. <clears throat> he only ever cares about playing his flute and drinking wine. 
he seems to be very squeamish about blood which stops him from being a warrior in the village I guess he is also into creative activities another thing about him is that his farming would be considered a failure as his crops always fail to grow and you know he can't really feed his family that's why people consider him a failure and a lazy person now let's go into the character traits of Unoka we can say that Unoka is a round and static character why is he round well throughout the story we learn a lot about him he's not a two-dimensional character that we barely know he is someone who is layered and has a lot of information about him we know that he loves music we know that he is a very talented musician he is invited to play within many several villages with his band and he we also know that he likes to drink wine we also know that he likes to borrow a lot of money from uh, many many people and he rarely ever pays him if ever really now let's go to the why he is a static character now the reason why he is a static character is that throughout the story he never changes since the beginning of the story we know a lot about him and till his end of his flashback situation or a conquest flashback he never changed he was still a lazy person who only enjoys ever talking drinking wine and playing music now let's go a little bit into our in-depth analysis Unoka is a person who is very scared of blood he seems to be very squeamish whenever he talks about it or sees it and you know this fear of him stops him from being a warrior within the village and gaining any recognition or title that he could have gotten if he was much more braver he had a reputation for borrowing large sums of money from many different people and you know as I said earlier, he rarely ever pays him back. Unoka, as I said, you know, he's very into creative activities. He is very good with music, such as the flute. Now, to Okonkwo, Unoka's aversion to violence, you could say, and more preference of music to Okonkwo seems to make him an effeminate idler, someone who is not very masculine to Okonkwo. Now, Unoka's diversion from violence and masculinity is the reason why a Kwankwo is so obsessive with strength and self-achievement now in conclusion for unoka though he is mostly a drainer within the village his carefree attitude can be exemplified within our community today too many times we don't really care about our personal well-being we always think about our work and our achievements and you know never take time to slow down and enjoy the little things in life now let's talk about Okonkwo now Okonkwo is our main character of our story here he strives in manliness and hates everything that is related to his father he is strong and proactive unlike Onoka soon enough he became wealthy famous and well respected within the village and by the elders as well now the Okonkwo the son of Unoka wants to be different from his father who is considered lazy and effeminate he wanted to be successful in a world where manliness comes first to do so he didn't accept anything that is similar to his father Unoka was interested in music and conversation and well he was very quiet poor cowardly and uh, soft Okwanko will always adopt opposite ideals and becomes proactive, wealthy, brave, violent, and you know, extremely opposed to music and anything else, and anything else that he thinks is soft, such as things his father did. You know, he will always become someone stoic. The character traits of Okwanko is that he is round and static as well, the same as his father. The way that he is round is that he we know a lot about Okonkwo, his thoughts the author put in the story, and his feelings towards things. We know that he hates anything that is related to his father and, you know, anything that is weak and feminine. We also learn that he is a static character, same as his father, because throughout the story, he holds his beliefs of being a violent and brave person, and that his manliness is the only thing that matters he would beat other people to prove he is right and that does not change until the very end his views does not change 
in the end rather than accepting the change of his village he would rather kill himself with his beliefs stuck to him now uh, let's go a little bit more of a minor in the analysis for Okonkwo same as we did with Funoka now although Okonkwo is a uh, superior character compared to Udonka his tragic flaw that he believes his manliness equals rash, anger and violence brings about his downfall. Now Kwon Kuo, even though he is always angry and violent, his feelings are quite complex. Now Kwon Kuo is a gruff person. He doesn't have the easiest time explaining his true feelings. Under than manly expressions, he still has fondness for other people such as Ikemefuna and Izina. These feelings contradict his manly ones, you know, because that is what he believes in. This shows us his fondness and more of his tender side of this character that we are able to see compared to his actual companions in the story. Now in conclusion, there are pauses that we can take from a conquo. His strive to become better is always something that we as people can exemplify. Nowadays, we should also look past the toxic masculinity that is very prevalent in today's society. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi, my name is Ina Mikiusan and I'll be explaining two characters in the novel Things Won't Watch, which are uh, Noye and Ezima. So to start off, who is Noye? So Noye is Okonko's elder son. Okonko thinks that uh, Noye is lazy and effeminate, just like his father Inoka, who he despises very, very much. Um, Noe is very um, sensitive and much gentler compared to his father, who's very brutal. He is always at loss on how to please his father and uh, would often re receive beatings for not being able to be what his father wanted him to be. So when Ikemefuna was later adopted as uh, Okonko's son, um, Noe became very attached to him. They would spend all of their time together. Um, and by spending time with uh, Ikemefuna, Noe gradually tries to put effort to please his father by doing things like scorning feminine things, when in reality, uh, he misses his mother's folk tales. However, he was ultimately betrayed when his father murdered Ikemefuna. He refused to acknowledge his father's violence as a masculine value, and to make it worse, he was even uh, beaten up by Okonko when he cried over Ikemefuna's death. So Noya later uh, decided to convert to Christianity as he was influenced by the kindness that the Christian missionaries displayed. So Okonko's lack of hesitation in disowning him after uh, his conversion highlights how poor uh, their relationship is. But nevertheless, uh, in the end, Noya finally found the peace that he sought after for so long. Enough uh, with the backstory. Let's get into the. Uh, let's get into. Uh, Noya's characteristic in death, shall we? So we can categorize Noya as a round and dynamic character as he did as he displays uh, a variety of emotion and has undergone through big changes throughout the story. From being a timid person, he was able to stand up from himself to do what he felt was right. Um, he still converted to Christianity even though he knew uh, that uh, he would receive negative outcomes from his father just for the sake of achieving eternal peace within himself. Other than that, we can say that he's quite effeminate compared to um, his father and the men in his village. His sensitivity, his gentleness and even his uh, interest in music are deemed as feminine as uh, are deemed as feminine by his father and most often the target of his father's harsh criticisms and beatings. So in my opinion, uh, Noya is also a, compa a, compa a compassionate person. He even found some of his clan's practices disturbing, specifically the casting of uh, infant twins into the evil forest. In his clan, uh, the earth goddess has decreed that uh, the twins, having twins, are, con are considered as an offense on the land and must be destroyed. So when he heard the twins' cries in um, the evil forest, he felt a he felt as though uh, something has snapped inside of him. And again, he felt something snapping inside of him when he saw uh, Okonkwo return home after killing Ikemefuna. So the snapping can actually be a symbol of his faith in humanity. 
Every time it snaps, someone must have gone against and violates their human rights. Last but not least, Loi can be portrayed as um, unfaithful as he went against his father and joined the Christian missionaries for the sake of his mental peace. So he never adhered to his heart the custom and practices of his clans and did not follow the gendered norms of his clan's culture. He's visibly uncomfortable with the castings of um, infant twins and he likes things that are considered feminine by others, such as music and folk tales. So what can we learn from this particular character? Nuya has actually taught us that being unfaithful doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. In fact, in this novel, uh, Nuya managed to save himself and find peace by converting into a Christian uh, after mentally and physically withstanding uh, his father's abuse after for so long. Uh, Nuya also reminds us that having compassion does not make a man less of a man. Even in our society nowadays, majority of uh, the people in the world still practices uh, toxic masculinity mindset, in which men are repressed and are not allowed to, st to show um, even the slightest of weakness. However, being able to be kind, to be soft, to sympathize are not weaknesses. To like feminine things is not a weakness. In fact, it shows that men are actual beings that are capable of processing and showing emotions, like how normal, healthy humans should be. So enough in Norway, uh, let's move on to the next character, Azima. So Azima is Okonko's favorite, beloved daughter. She is Ekwafi's only daughter. Many of Ekwafi's uh, children died as soon as she gave birth to them. And Azima is the only uh, one that survives, which uh, is why her mother treasures and loves her very, very much. Ekwafi is often um, very unskeptical as a result of her, of her experience with the constant disappointment of losing children. So she'll do anything to protect Azima, even if it risks her life. So similar to her mother, uh, Azima is very bold and brimming with confidence. She, she sits like a man, she takes on the task of a boy and even has the temper of her father's. Being a man who only appreciates masculine qualities, Okonko becomes very fond of her to the point that uh, he repeatedly wishes that um, Azima was born as a boy instead because he knew that she wouldn't make a good son, unlike Noye. So, um, to show how much of a good daughter she is, she even postpones her marriage in order to help Okonko leverage his socio-political powers, despite Azima being feared to be an ob obbanji, uh, she grew up to be a strong, supportive daughter with close understanding with her father and ends up living uh, a normal life like any other typical Omofia woman. So in overall, we can say that Azima is also a round and dynamic character, just like Noye. From being a child that was expected to die early, she proved that to be wrong as she grew up to be strong and was even very much loved by her father, who is not typically very affectionate. Um, as mentioned before, uh, she is very bold and courageous. Her way of talking, sitting, and her capability of uh, taking a boy's um, task shows just how courageous she is. She calls her mother just by her name, and she even dares to confront her own father on some occasions. So these traits that she has just made Okonko strongly wishes that she was born a boy instead of uh, a girl. So that she could actually take on the responsibility of the, uh, being the leader of the village. And not only that, she is also very wise and loyal. She prioritized strategies before emotion, just like a father. Um, her decision to postpone her own marriage until her family returned from the exile justifies that she is indeed wise because she understands um, that it would actually support her father. She also understands her gender role set by her clan. She never crosses the boundary, even when she has these traits of um, being bold and courageous. Instead, she remains supported by her father's side. So, from Azima, we learn that being a woman is not a dis disadvantage or a loss, especially when they have brilliant, brilliant traits such as bravery. So, throughout the novel, Okonko kept on mentioning how he wishes Azima to be born as a boy. Um, because she has great masculine qualities. The way he kept on wishing for it was as if it was such a bad thing or such a loss 
uh, to have uh, as in uh, born as a woman instead. This thing, the, th the thing about this is that uh, toxic masculinity often views women as helpless and weak and they're not suitable to be leaders. But every woman with vulnerable characteristics on this earth should be celebrated in instead of being repressed. Another thing that we can actually learn from Enzima is that uh, women are not limited to only obey uh, the gender roles. Gender role restricts someone's capability of doing something. Over the history and time, we have many great women figures like Maya Angelou, uh, Anne Frank, and etc. Imagine the losses that we have to face if only men are allowed to contribute to the society. It's the quality that counts, not the gender. So I hope uh, that you all gain benefit from this and that's all for me. Thank you. Kimer Funai is a 15-year-old boy from Ambaino village. He entered the story as a sacrifice from an accident where one of the Ambaino villagers killed one of the Umofia villagers. And because of that accident, Ikemer Funai is being taken under Okonko's care for three years. As for his characteristic, Ikema Funai is a lively boy which makes everyone in Okoku's household like him. He is a knowledgeable boy. And because of that, he able to attract Enwoya's attention. And Enwoya admire Ikema Funa a lot because he seems Ikema Funa is someone that knows everything. Ikema Funa is a very hardworking boy. And because he's a hardworking boy, he able to attract Okonko's attention. Based on these three characteristics, we can conclude that Ikemefuna serves as the best role model among the Okonko's children. Ikemefuna is a dynamic around character. At first, Ikemefuna is very determined to run away from Okonko's house and return back home. He did try to run away like for once or two times, but he just don't know where to start. Even after three years, he still miss his family so dearly, especially his mother and his three old sister. But when he been told that he can, uh, he going to be sent home, Ikemefuna somehow feel at loss. He he think he did think that. It is such a blessing and he would be glad to see his mother and his trio sister back but somehow he just knew that he won't be able to see them anymore. We can see that there is a changes in Ikemefuna's character from missing his family so dearly and wanting to go home but in the end and uh, he is not so eager and determined. Like he used to be in the first, in the early scene. Ikemefuna is a character that can set up a great example as an independent child. He being sent to a stranger home, a stranger house. He did not rebel, he did not cause any riot, but instead adapt with the situation and even impress people around him. I believe this is one of the best lesson that we can learn from Ikemefuna correct. For Mr. Brown, he is the first Christian missionary in Mbanta and Omofia. He is the one who built a hospital and a school in Omofia. Mr. Brown has a few nice characteristics. He respects other people, religion, culture and belief in Omofia. He is also a good listener. This shows in the scene when he talks with Akuna. They are discussing about their belief in God and Mr. Brown lent all ears towards Akuna's explanation about his God. Mr. Brown did not argue but rather respect Akuna's view. However, Mr. Brown also has one flaw in his characteristic. He is ignorant towards his own health. Despite he realized the warning sign of his health, he did not seek any initiative or seek medi medication. 
and this has led Mr. Brown to return home. Mr. Brown is considered as a flat and static character. To begin with, there is not much information about him, and Mr. Brown did not undergo any changes or leave any significant scene. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. And I would like to apologize if there are some characters they forgot to mention or there are some parts in the story they forgot to mention. The uh, reason is because we lack of time and all. But yeah, that's all from our group. And see you all back in class. Stay classy. <laughs> that's it. Bye-bye.